नमस्कार भाई सो टुडे वी विल सी व्हाट टाइनिंग फिलोसोफर प्रॉब्लम इज एंड हाउ वी आर यूजिंग इट इन आवर इन आवर कोड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस कंसीडर दी दिस सिनेरियो दैट देयर आर फाइव फिलोसोफर्स एंड वी हैव फाइव फोर्क्स एंड ईच फिलोसोफर रिक्वायर्स टू फोर्क्स टू इट सो आफ्टर अ वाइल ईच ऑफ देम विल रिक्वायर टू फोर्क्स so there there arises a problem of synchronization okay now let us say that uh, these two uh, these these philosophers are actually processes so let us name them okay so this is p1 okay and this is p2 this is p3 this is p4 and this is p5 so p1 requires these two resources so let us name them r1 r2 p2 requires r2 and r3 okay and p3 requires r3 and r4 and p4 requires r4 and r5 and P5 requires R5 and R1. Okay, so we we need to synchronize them. Okay, synchronize the access to the resources. So what we can do, we can design a system where we will allocate the resources only if or uh, both the resources are available. Okay, so if uh, R1 and R2 is available, then only we will assign those to P1. Okay, we will not assign partial resources like uh, R1 is allocated to P1 and R2 is allocated to P2. if you if you do this then it will cause deadlock okay so that's why we are we are doing this and uh, second thing is p1 will only hold the resources for for say 7 seconds okay there is a time limit for each resource so uh, so that uh, rest of the processes will processes will get chance to use those resources okay now let us see the code for this all right so we are using uh, mongodb to uh, store the resources so if you haven't watched uh, the connectivity video here is the link for that and uh, now let us see the the code okay so this is the server side code where uh, where the the processes will request for the resources okay so first of all we have this server socket uh, which is used to uh, get connected to the clients and uh, we have normal socket we are using multi threading in it so we need uh, individual instance for every every client okay so we are sending that to separate thread so here we are creating the server socket and we are using this port number so it it can be anything okay you can use any port number so and uh, next we are uh, we are accepting uh, accepting the connections and we are we are we are, we are making a socket for it we are sending the, that socket to a separate thread so we have used uh, a class where we are uh, creating separate threads and uh, the name of that class is process and a separate object is created for it okay and we are passing a socket as a parameter so it will be uh, sent to the constructor okay and a separate thread is created so thread dot start and the counter is incremented as we have only five uh, processes so we are uh, incrementing it five times and then it will come out of it okay now let us see the the process class okay the class process extends thread and uh, the socket is passed to it so each thread will uh, allocate this uh, socket s to socket k which is there uh, which is there in this process class okay and uh, this void run function will execute independently in each uh, thread okay so we are using buffer reader to get the uh, to get the messages from uh, from the client okay so we have given this k dot get input stream and input stream reader its input is given to the buffer reader where we are reading that that data okay and to write back to uh, the client we are using print writer okay and we are we have given k dot get output stream 
to print writer so it, it will give the output to that output string okay so next we are reading uh, reading a line so the first thing which we are uh, getting from the client is the name of the process okay so p is the name of the process from uh, for the pro for the process okay so it could be p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 or any name okay you can give any name okay next we are displaying that name then we have uh, two strings so these two strings will take the uh, the resources which are required by the process okay so if the process wants r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 so it can be any resource okay then we will display the the required resources and then we have created this uh, check data class okay so this is uh, this class will check the availability of resources okay and we have passed r1 and r2 to it so it has a uh, method which is called status so it will check whether the, uh, the the resources which are required by the process are available or not okay now let us see that class check data okay so we have a uh, string r1 and r2 where uh, these two are the required resources okay so the constructor is uh, assigning the values to this next the ch the status method will connect to the database and uh, it will get the database which is called dining okay so dining has two uh, two two collections which is uh, r1 and r2 and the r1 and r2 are passed by the uh, by the constructor to this, this to this class okay so these are the required resources so this this can have any values like r1 r2 r3 r4 r1 and r2 are just the names given to this uh, uh, to this to this uh, class okay so we are getting those collections and then we are checking for the values so there is a there is an attribute called value so it has as the value of 0 or 1 okay this value so if the value is 0 then it is uh, it is free okay the resource is free so you can uh, get access to that resource else it is not available okay then you have to wait for that resource so if both the resources are 0 then we are making it 1 okay in this else part we are making it to one like uh, we are we are updating the the column we are creating a new object with the value as one value set as one and then we are updating the previous object which is which was there in the collection okay and if, if it is not available then we are returning a equal to one okay so returning return a as one else if it is available then make the value to one and return as zero all right so let us go back to check data okay so here we were and uh, it will check for uh, for the availability d dot check if it comes out to be one then it means that uh, that it is uh, it is been already occupied by some other thread okay so in that case we need to sleep for uh, eight seconds this eight thousand is the milliseconds we have to wait for eight seconds then after 8 seconds it will again check for the availability okay and if it is uh, available then it will print, me print the message as resource granted and it will send that to client okay which has requested for that resource okay and then the client will uh, again wait for 7 seconds and it will uh, release that resource okay and then it will read here and uh, then it will call a method called d dot release so this uh, release method will again make the value to zero okay here is the release method it will again connect to the database it will get the dining database then it will get the collection instance and then it will uh, update the value as zero okay both the collections are updated here and then okay and then it gets over let us see the client uh, client class so in client class we are just creating a socket and we are give, giving it an I, uh, the IP num IP address and uh, port number and then again we are creating print writer to write to the stream and then buffer reader is to read the data which is sent by the server and then we are uh, asking the user the name of the process which can be p1 p2 p3 any name okay and then we are uh, asking the user for the resources so user can enter 
like R1, R2, R3, R4, any any resource, and then it sends that that resource to server, and then it waits for the reply from the server, like resource granted, okay, and then it displays that that message, then it will see sleep for seven seconds, and then it sends the reply as done, okay, then server server will call release method, and it will release the the resources, okay. and finally it will re receive receive message from server which is resource released okay so this is the code okay now let us uh, run this uh, first of all you need to start the mongodb server for this okay and also you need to create uh, the five collections inside dining database okay i will show you where the uh, collections are being created okay first of all let us start the server okay now there is a command okay now the the server has started now let us see if we have that database already if it is not there you can create it using this command use tiny Okay. Now let us see if the collections are there. Yes, I have already created those collections. If you want to create a, a collection inside this database, so you can use this command: db dot insert. Sorry, db dot the name of the collection. So let us create a new resource called r6 dot insert. And here you have to give the attribute like value colon and the Value which is zero. Okay, so that's it. And again, we can check the collections. Okay, so we have uh, six resources. We don't need six resources. Actually, we need only five resources. Now let us run this this program. First of all, you need to run the server. Okay, now the server is waiting for the processes. I have already copied this into the home directory. So we can directly run. that file okay java client pe dot java okay so now it, it is asking for the process name so let us name this as p1 and it requires resource r1 and r2 now let us open a separate tab for uh, another process sorry its name is client p p2 and it requires r2 and r3 or let us not enter it we will uh, run this uh, at the at the same time okay to check whether it allocates the resources properly p3 and p3 requires r3 and r4 okay p4 E4 requires R4 and R5. Then we have final process which is R P5 and it requires R5 and R1. Okay. Now let us run this. Okay. Okay. So now you can see this as uh, the resource is granted, resource is released. Here it is not yet granted. It is granted and release. Not yet granted. Granted and release. Let us see. Here it is granted. It is waiting for release resource. Okay. Now here it is. It has granted. And now it is released. Okay. So it is working properly. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you have any doubt, please. Uh, mention it in the comment section and thanks for watching do like comment share and subscribe